Hey everybody, you're listening to the High Sessions Hawaii podcast where we talk about everything local and beyond. I'm Johnny Masato, your host, and joining me today is Mr. Kao Shimabukuro, Devin Nakoba. Before we begin, let me remind our listeners of all the ways they can stay in touch with the program. There is Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at High Sessions. You can go to SoundCloud, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts to listen to the podcast. And finally, you can email us at highsessions at yahoo.com. If you'd like to be on the, not be on the show, but support the show, get music on the channel. You can go to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, donate, and you'll be more involved with the show and all that kind of stuff. Uh, no new patrons this week. And by the way, we are shooting upstairs. Our AC downstairs broke, so we... Uh, Not that there were divas or anything. <laughs> we can't work without AC. But yeah. it's really, really hot. It's though. really hot. I think I'm going to go downstairs after this and sauna a little while. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy hot down yeah. there, and they're waiting for the part. So uh, thank you to the Kusumotos. They're on a trip right now, which is why we're up here. Yeah. And they come back by the time this is going to air, so that's why I'm comfortable oh, so saying So party that. tonight at the Kusumotos house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, You just got to clean up for them. Yeah. yeah, they were nice enough to let us uh, come upstairs to, to use their... <laughs> Their home. Uh, thank you to Kupu Kupu Landscaping, Landscape Architects. Call Kevin Yokomura, 808-722-8685 for a free estimate or go to kupukupulandscaping.com. Actually, as we speak, Kevin is out uh, checking out a property. We have a irrigation leak at a house that I'm working on. So thank you, Kevin, for that. Uh, what for- happens? You just go, okay, hey, Kev, there's some sort of issue over here and we need you to he just drops stuff and goes and does these things. For well, you? I mean, I wouldn't say drop stuff, but he is accommodating. Nice. You know, and well, the, the house is vacant, so it's he can go anytime. So yeah. uh, that helps out, you know. But yeah, so yeah, we there's this one part of the yard that was always muddy when it's not supposed to be muddy over there. That's a sign. And it's mm. like, oh, okay, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, so they're gonna, had to deal with that. You've had to deal with that. Oh, Kyle, yeah, yeah, Kyle. Didn't you? With, no, Cause that you, was a sewer. Because your place needed irrigation and stuff too. No, no, no. no? No. That's from the river behind his house. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. when it, that's when I needed help. <laughs> that's a whole different yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they true. have flooding and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, and thank you to Fort Ruger Market. We had some dried aku today, mm. which is amazing. That's good always stuff. good that stuff. That was good stuff. I Can had, you eat uh, that? Chicken long rice. I cheated and I ate a few pieces, okay. even if I get mercury poisoning. Well, more uh, mercury I poisoning. Figure, what the <laughs> yeah, hell? Yeah, you more only gotta live it up. You only live once. Okay. Yeah. Well, be telling your wife that that you said that when you're in the hospital with dementia. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. So Kyle, um, I'm gonna have you talk a little bit about our, our esteemed guest here, Reed Inoue. I know he's from the surf world and has done a lot of media things of that nature, but also just within surfing, stand up paddleboarding, things like that. But to talk a little about your friend here. Yeah. So th- this is Reed Inoue. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you, Kyle. <laughs> and no, we're done. I, I mean, I know Reed a long time. He's been heavily involved with the surf industry since the 70s, let's say. 70s. Yeah. He used and to come to my, I used to have a surf shop, and Kyle used to come in and go, oh, you, you get extra stickers. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> just, a, just, a true, just a true story. He, he opened the surf shop in the early, late the, 70s, late 70s, 70s, early 80s called yeah. Surfing Hawaii. It was a small little surf shop. The logo was the name Surfing with a little um, Birds of Paradise as their logo. And he amassed a surf team and opened up that little shop right next to Zippy's in Waiao. Waiao, yeah. And oh, Waiao. Yeah. And back yeah, then, yeah, there was like, right I think there was like Job Lot and then there was your store right it next to it. was Popeye's Chicken. Oh, Popeye's Chicken. Okay. <laughs> and I remember being like maybe seven, eight years old going to Zippy's with my family. And I go, there's a surf shop right there. And... When you're, in that, when you're a kid in the 70s and 80s, surf was cool to, hmm? to buy and, and, you know, hmm. and wear. You know? Even if I was like a guy wanting to surf and just bodyboard, I still was always attracted to the surf industry and the surf wear back in there because it was the fashion thing, right? So I remember walking into that store, first time ever seeing the brand, and this guy behind the counter said, well, hello, you know, like, <laughs> talking me, story. Right? Talking yeah. story. And then <laughs> when I was about to leave, he said, here's a sticker for you. And it was a Surfing Hawaii sticker that I stuck on my portfolio in fourth, fifth grade. And I had it the whole entire year. And I always used to look at it and go, someday I want to design surf graphics. Whoa. Wow. And the guy that had was that it, your inspiration? Yeah. yeah. The guy that handed me the sticker was Reed Inouye. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. him, by the way, who's over here. So <laughs> there's a lot of... Uh, I, still, I got a lot of stickers left. <laughs> 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 so I like a lot of from my portfolio when he gets <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, I know Reed a long time after that. I grew up, graduated, and started working at Locomotion. And he, he's done a lot of promotion and marketing with the brand. Has a lot of um, experience in the contest, surf contest part of it. And also has done magazines and all these other things. So we can get started from there. Was that a good enough introduction? Well, yeah, that's great. Reed, so I, my first question. TV shows too, right? Yeah, TV shows. We even shows. did a... A Hawaiian style TV show. We did right? a Hawaiian style TV show. We'll get to <laughs> that. Yeah. Are, are you from the Pearl City area? Um, I'm actually from Aya. Okay. Okay. They okay. moved to Mililani, and then moved to town when my kids got older, just because they were going to school in town, and I got divorced. And one day, my ex-wife said, "You know what? It's a lot easier to live in town. I don't. I hate driving. Like, you don't have to drive anymore because I was living in town. So you've, been, <laughs> you've been in town ever since." Yeah. So, so what made you start a, a surf <laughs> That's the shop? only advice he took from his uh, ex-wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she don't care. It's the only good advice she yeah. gave you. <laughs> well, I got all kinds of ex-wife ad- <laughs> advice. <laughs> so, yeah, what made you open that surf shop in, in Pro City um, during that time? Back then, I think the surf industry was taking off. And um, I knew guys that were starting surf brands. Um, not even a surf shop, just, just opening up a company to deal with the Japanese mm-hmm. and that's why I did it I, I thought maybe if I worked hard enough and I had a good logo I could make money working with the a Japanese sponsor mm. that's and I and I did and you know what I made some good money <laughs> were you shaping boards or did, who was your shaper back then uh, I had so many shapers just guys from the North Shore um, I don't even remember anymore I mean just North Shore shapers that were making boards that really nobody knew or kind of knew, but were not like the main, the main guys. Did you have a massive surf team at that time for your shop? What the, okay, wait, explain to people what that means. Cause it sounds like it's just a bunch of surfers getting together, but he owned an actual shop. So how yeah. does that work? And I can go into the whole. Yeah, go ahead. When we started our surf shop, I figured, okay, you need a surf team. Mm-hmm. You need riders that you can promote outside of Hawaii. And that's when I got that Japanese licensee Sorry. to really... Nobody was making money at the time. I mean, and this is a good start. It was what, a fringe, a fringe uh, sport. I yeah. It, back then it was... I think Locomotion had their own team. And I used to talk to Rob Burns a lot about what's going on. And he goes, oh, you know, one, one day you're going to have to have a surf team and you're going to have to pay surfers. And I think at the time he had Buzzy Kerbox mm-hmm. and a couple guys that were like, okay, we need to pay this guy a couple hundred bucks a month. That's it? Yeah, it was a couple hundred bucks a month. All they wanted was free clothes, too, at that time, too. They were stolen. No, they wanted money. And money and free clothes. <laughs> it, it, was, it was when the yeah. money started coming in, and it was like, okay, it's getting real now. So surfers from around the world were finally making like, whoa, whoa, I make 400, 500 bucks. And then guys like Larry Burnerman were making money. And they were but, making a lot more. But at that time, they still had to hold on regular jobs, right? It wasn't enough no, to pay were, the bills. They were, they were actually just surfing. Oh, really? There were guys making eight, eight, 800 bucks a month. You know, that's, I mean, that's, good, that's good. Yeah. yeah. I guess so if you think back that's, to the years. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's actually that's pretty good money. money. Yeah. Yeah. And but then, where do you where do you find these surfers? Did they walk into your shop? Do you? Um, they were winning contests. Okay, that's mm-hmm. that's a whole deal. So you'd go down, you'd see them win the contest, and go, hey, is everybody yeah, sponsoring that's, you? That's what happened. And um, with my team rider, Bird Mahilona, James Mahilona, he he was one of those guys that could surf, but nobody wanted him because everybody had a full t- surf team, and hmm. so working with him, I knew he had talent. He just never had a sponsor, and I picked him up, and my and he went to Japan, and he just blew everybody away. And one day, my 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 licensee said, "Oh, your guy is good. We're gonna start paying him." So when he paid him, it snowballed into, okay, uh, a wetsuit company started paying him, a leash company started paying him, and like four, six hundred, two hundred, two hundred. We paid him a little bit. All of a sudden, he's making um, two grand a month. Jeez. And, and, That's good you know, money for back, back in the day, back too. Then. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And then when 
Sean Thompson came out of his clothing line, Instinct. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, Nate, maybe we should sponsor this guy. He's, he's a good Hawaiian surfer, and we don't have any Hawaiians on our team. And that's, that's how he started with, you know, all of a sudden you got, you know, you add up all your, all your money making, and then somebody like Instinct comes in and pays you just as much as everybody else combined. Mm. So did he leave the, the company to go to Instinct? No, he was still riding for us and, you know, Instinct as a, as a clothing company. So, you know, all of a sudden he's making a couple hundred bucks a month, a thousand, maybe a little over a thousand bucks a month, so, which is good money. Yeah. yeah especially yeah. back then. To do something yeah. you love, yeah. Yeah. Surfing, surfing and getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. And that's when surfing really started taking off. And, and then after your retail stint with um, Surfing Hawaii, you, you kind of started to get into the contest realm. Of you know, directing contests and stuff, The only reason right? why I got into contests, believe it or not, and nobody even knows this, like, how come you started running contests? I said, because Dane Kealoha quit surfing. <laughs> and that's what happened. What? I, I was at, when, when the whole po politics and um, surfing started having problems with surfers and um, the world tour, Dane said, you know what, I'm not paying anybody any any fine for, for not, sur uh, I'm going to surf in the Hawaii contest, and I don't care what they say or do, I don't care about the world tour, I'm, I'm walking away from it. I, and I kept telling him, you can't just quit, we, we, we need you, you're the guy who's going to be the next world champ, he goes, I'm over it. And everything that happened from probably when he went to South Africa and and got discouraged because... I don't know. You, you guys don't know what happened, right? Mm -mm. He he was he went to Afri South Africa when Mandela was jailed. Oh, okay. And so apartheid was still in place. Yeah. So when he when he when he surfed in a contest, it was an amateur contest, but he he got blackballed from them giving him his award, or wow. or using a, the, the 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 restaurant that he was having the award ceremony, and they said, "Oh man." You know what? This is not going to happen. Dark skin, so there's no yeah, way we're going to. Yeah, completely. Completely. Yeah. Yeah, and I think when when Eddie Ika went to um, South Africa, same thing happened to him. Like, oh, you know mm -hmm. what? Your kind can't surf, and so it just like pissed everybody off mm -hmm. from Hawaii. It's like, oh wow. So look, uh, can I back up just a little bit? Because I think uh, it might be good to. Because we have listeners from all over the place. Yeah. But just to explain to people how the contests work. Because you and Kyle, like, you've been involved with that yeah. whole system for a long time. Yeah? Right. And I've, I, I'm not as indoctrinated uh -huh. into it as right. other people are. So when you're talking about a world tour, so back then, uh -huh. surfers would, if your team surfer would go from contest to contest to contest, like flying around the world and, yeah. and win the contest. And that way, at the end of the season, they would get an award or something? Well, they would get an award at the event, okay. but at the end of the year, you have an overall award for the overall point winner. Okay. And back then, every, like everything was, what's that? Kind of like golf. Yeah. It's like the whole tour. Your circuit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So everybody gets points globally for doing the whole tour. Which was, which encompassed where? Like, I mean, oh, here, obviously, yeah. California. Back then, it was Australia, Hawaii, California. Japan, believe it or not, mm. Japan was big back then. Um, South Africa, um, I think they used to have one event or two events in South Af um, Brazil. Wow. So it was a pretty, I mean, back then, I mean, it was grassroots, but still, yeah, there was a whole tour. Did the finals mm. always end in Hawaii, though, as the pinnacle of the whole event? Back then. It did, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and to me, and I can get into this later, but... Um, it should actually come back and end in Hawaii, but I don't run the association. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for you guys don't know right now, it doesn't. It starts in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Why is that? For some reason. Why did they reverse it in? I have no idea. Because they have the money. I should. I shouldn't say that, but because the money di dictates why they want to start and where they're going to end. Based so they on get the most money in Hawaii, or they get the most money in other places now. They get the most money in wherever they want to end the whole tour. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And they don't rotate it. It always, it's consistently no. the same. Yeah, it's been like that for what? Maybe 
four, four or five four years. Five years. Yeah, hmm. the whole tour changed. Yeah, I mean, and I can go into all the negatives about surfing, but I try to. I like keep, I, keep, honestly, keep, I I like the positive stuff, but it's yeah. kind of fun to hear though. The, the kind of the negative stuff that goes. Well, on. negative, but I think it's uh, there's a there's there's drawbacks to it. Now, I mean, once yeah. I think like you were saying, you know, when it when it started, it was a bunch of guys going, okay. We're going to send everybody to all these different world contests. We're going to find a points winner. We're going yeah. to write. And it was very grassroots. Guys uh, got money from specific stuff. Right. But then, like you guys were saying, it became this this behemoth of a sort of thing. Yeah. Right? It was run more by the money than it is sometimes by the, the joy of surfing. Yeah. And right? it, back in the day, too, and we can attest to this, of course, um, the, the fashion really dictated, too, the popularity mm. of the sport and vice versa. Yeah. Like surf wear was the cool thing to do, right. you know, and wear back then. Yeah. And now it's just saturated with other different sports and Completely. different type of contests. I mean, and to me, the energy drinks kind of help make surfing bigger. The energy drinks? Yeah. Oh yeah. How come? Because you got monster Cause they got energy, way got, money, yeah. way a lot more money. Oh, in. Red Bull mm -hmm. and stuff like that, putting money into Red Bull and Monster. But if you look no at the kidding. whole surf. Or, or the whole extreme sport world of athletes and things going on. Red Bull and Monster sponsor them all. Yeah. They, all they all make money off. Look at the logos that show up. And sometimes you'll see it on Olympics, but I think this last, the last couple of Olympics, they had to take all their logos off. Yeah. Um, even all the surfers, all the logos came off, which was funny because I, I know what their whole their sponsors are and everything was cleaned up there was just a white board with a couple logos on the the guy who made the board and that was it so now so nowadays when they when you see guys in contests their boards are going to be covered with logos for different well, it always stuff. was yeah i mean if you look at a surf magazine from reaches i mean there is no surf mag well there's surf well, free surf well, right i can only go off of like i i've seen the surfer magazines in like the 70s and 80s yeah. right? everybody would see it. and you know you see a guy on a wave and it's just him and yeah. his board and he's on a wave and now yeah. it's interesting to know that actually go on instagram I'm, and look i'm looking over. right there at that there's logos all over that guy's board yeah mm. uh, bruce irons i guess yeah back then you needed multiple sponsors to make a living and yeah, nowadays yeah, yeah. with the industry being so huge you kind of just need one well if you look at instagram on. Yeah. And so social me social media posts, you can you see all their logos, yeah, mm. like yeah. bigger logos, mm. and there's a lot of new companies now. All the companies that kind of came up in the last three or four years, you start you're starting or I'm starting to see them on boards, and so I know who's writing for who. Hmm. Um, Interesting. But I think the Red Bulls and the Monsters, you know, they they take up a lot of room on logos on boards. Yeah. And I, I used to work with Monster, so I and I seen them grow from nobody to somebody, into somebody big, to somebody multi big, big. Right. And it's just crazy how and much I they mean, grew. I think it's just a it's just a drink, you know. And yeah. it, to where it's and it, I would think that being on a surfboard in the middle of the ocean, uh, sailing on Monster would be really difficult because <laughs> with all the with all the energy that it gives you, you're sitting on a board just vibrating like, I cannot wait for this freaking wave. Well, it rehydrates you when you come back from surfing. Yeah, you know? I guess so, yeah. It does. But if you look at all the extreme sports, like in snowboarding, skating, and they end their rides, you see them holding the cans, yeah. 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 or they have the caps on, or the, the stickers on the hats or helmets. It's, it's all over the place, you know, hmm. so... It's all and and a lot of a lot of these kids get paid to expose their logos, yeah. and if they don't, I think some of them get fined or oh. they don't get paid for you know oh. missing the uh, oh, okay. the logo uh, uh, assign, assignment on whatever you know. And the, back when you had team riders, you didn't necessarily do that. Guys would just say, "Oh, I, I ride for you know Hawaii surf kind of thing," and that was it. Yeah, I think even back then. Guys were like, put your hat on, mm. you know, put your logo on, make sure your hat is that way, not behind. So they started already doing that back then. Hmm. And a lot of people didn't know it, but if you're a sponsor, you're going to, you're going to realize, Hey, you know what? Your hat was on wrong. Yeah. You know, you're not really? going to get 20 bucks or 50 bucks or a thousand bucks because they forgot to put their hat on the right way. 
<laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Kinda, that's a good pivot into the next thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, you worked with a whole generation of surfers that are now world renowned uh -huh. and stuff. Can you go back to the parts when you met them when they first started and their kids? Who was like one of the most influential surfers nowadays that you did kind of see throughout the years and watch their career expand to where it's now? Um, I think the biggest first couple of guys and I, I've been through the, with them through when they were kids. It's Kalani Rob, mm -hmm. you know, because he was like the wonder kid that was supposed to win all the events and be world champ. But then there was kids right behind him, and I, My I wife still had remember the biggest crush on Kalani Rob. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. what's up? My wife had pictures of Kalani Rob on uh, her. Um, <laughs> you so. kidding me? What? No, I'm not joking. Yeah, so uh -huh. he's not allowed around. No, yeah. no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. She really went the other way. When she <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. She got a different Kalani Rob. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't In fact, you, you know what's interesting, and I'm not going to mention any names, but I found found out who his adopted family is, and they're actually entertainers and singers. Oh. Oh. Wow. Um, and I didn't know it until I, I saw his face, his uh, Instagram page. I went, no way, I know that guy. I knew that guy when he was, you know, coming up as a, and I can tell you off off the air who they are, and you go, oh, I know that, who that person is, sure, and I know yeah. his sisters, mm -hmm. but so they're all a, really, really. He was Hanai by that family, you see? He, uh, he got a, he's, he's, he's not from the, you know, he's he's adopted. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely. And he Good didn't surfer. know who his bro brothers and sisters were when, Till like three or four years ago, I just saw an Instagram post and I went, "No way! I know that huh. guy." Wow! And and you guys know them too. Okay. So. <laughs> but so he was one of the first that you saw coming up as a youngster. I I saw him and then I saw, of course, Sonny Sonny Garcia was the next. He was actually the guy, I had picked as okay. This is our world champ, mm. but he he didn't work the way he felt like working. Mm. Like he had his own idea of, you know what? I'm gonna ride my bikes, my dirt bike, and and do that. And then he got hurt, mm. you know. But he should have been world champ two or three times. Um, and then after that, I I saw Andy Irons coming up, Andy and Bruce Irons. And to me, you know what? These these guys, one of the two, actually Andy's gonna be a world champ, and he did. So you could see the talent when they were in their teens. Oh yeah, yeah. When he was. 15. In fact, my friend, my friend was, um, he used to own a company called Gotcha mm -hmm. back in the day. He goes, well, what do you think of, he's a South African guy, what do you think of Andy Irons? Mm -hmm. So what do you mean what I think? He's the best guy around. He's the next guy up. He goes, oh, I'm going to try and get him a job with Billabong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he did. He got him, he got him in as, as a world, you know, as a surfer for Billabong. And he won, what, three world titles? Mm -hmm. What is it, um, as a person who's not a surfer, what is it about seeing Andy Irons work that made you go, that's the guy? Was it the work ethic? Is it the way that they look at the ways? Because as a person who doesn't yeah. surf, right? Uh, you, and you, that's you, an easy answer for Okay. Me. He was bipolar. Really? <laughs> yeah, that was his, that was his winning his combination. His secret weapon. <laughs> why, do you, why do you think? Because he was born that way? No. <laughs> why do you think? <laughs> No, well, like, what is he, yeah, what being is bipolar he, gives yeah. you an advantage. Uh, he used to surf in a way that Kelly Slater couldn't even surf. I mean, it was just so dynamically different from anybody else mm. that things that he would do, and he didn't care what he did, but he'd do it anyway. So he'd look at a wave, and in his mind, he'd think completely differently. And that used to frustrate Kelly Slater. Mm. That's why he could never beat Kelly, because he always knew that... Andy had the talent, but he surfed completely differently from his own brother. Mm. Hmm. You know, I think when you're bipolar, you just okay. This is the wave. This is the calculation. This is how I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna do it like the way I feel like doing it. And you look at it from a completely different perspective. Yeah, yeah, completely. And you know, I I I knew he he had to take what he had to take to stay creative in his head. I didn't say anything, but I w always knew. And people around him probably knew too, but mm. you know, 
it, it happened. Interesting. So, so different from, I mean, and I, I look at things, all surfers, the, the way I, I see it, not how anybody else sees it. So I kind of always know, know how they're going to surf. Like I knew how Sonny could win and nobody knew what I was thinking, but I was, I would talk to them on the side at a contest and just tell them, Hey, you're surfing like crap. And they go, he goes, what do you mean? I said, so-and-so's blowing you away. And he look at the guy with that, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to kick his ass. That was his, his favorite line. I'm going to kick his ass. <laughs> and, and he would, he would go out and he'd surf different and surf better. I go, oh, there you go. <laughs> when you talk about surfing better, I mean, is it is it the way that they attack the wave is coming in? Is it because you know you got to get on the wave, uh -huh. you got to get on the wave, and then you got to figure out what you're gonna do, right? Whether yeah. you're gonna you go into he, a tube, you come just, out of the it tube. It was a fire that would get him more motivated to to surf way better. Hmm. And he was like the Michael Jordan of surfing. Yeah, yeah. it's the same. It's the same. Or Mike Tyson. Yeah. yeah. No, because like, <laughs> Michael Jordan. You in the documentary? It's like. And I took that personally. And oh, then, yeah, and then yeah, he was yeah, going, yeah. Like, yeah, he motivated himself. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. Keep, yeah. Keep Kobe Bryant, too. Yeah. 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 And I think the guys who were world champs, the best guys, were the ones that got motivation from, from what people thought mm -hmm. on their own. But and Andy was like, oh, my brain's telling me something different, so I'm going to do something different. Hmm. And that's how he won three times. He could have won five, six times if he wanted to. But I think he was over it. It's like, yeah, I won three titles. I, that's enough. I made I made the money I made, and so he was happy with what he already had. That's what I thought. I could be wrong, but you know, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wanted to ask about putting together uh, a surf contest. Uh -huh. How does that work? Because you you did that basically from scratch. You said, okay, this guy stopped doing them, so I'm gonna do a surf. How do you work out a surf contest? How do you put How that all put together? together? Um, you ran um, the H Pack, was it H Pack? Yeah, it's uh. it's like the pro am. At, back in the day, we had no, we had we had amateur contests. We had four contests a year, and that was it. It's like, how are we going to get better? It's not mm -hmm. enough to get better. Mm -hmm. So I I said, okay, we're going to do ten contests a year. Oh, <laughs> yeah, for 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 the. It's like, for the it's top like amateurs almost every month and then and then another 10 for the oh, beginners oh my god and then on the pro side we did i think eight eight six to eight surf contests for the pro the pros the pro am side that's where i met you okay and that's, i was trying to figure out where i met I, I met you when you uh you were helping to organize um a contest for kids uh -huh. trying to like it was it was i think that was it but he was a guy who was helping to mastermind it because it was more of a, it was like an educational thing for the uh, kids so that they get an experience of mm -hmm. what it's like to surf in a contest. And you know what I mean? There's heats and all of that kind of stuff. Because right. if you just think you're going to just go pro as yeah, a surfer, because you go, oh, okay, I, I can surf now. It, that's yeah. not how it works because you have to have the sort of the experience yeah. of learning how to surf a contest. The different right? levels of getting there. Yeah, yeah. Because if you think you're just going to do it and get there, it's never going to happen. Yeah. And a lot of guys found that out early. And then they quit surfing. I go, what happened to you? Uh, you know, I, I did it, but I could only go so far. They really didn't get the training that they should have had. Um, so and you they, put together they, 10 they quit. contests to give them the training. <laughs> <laughs> but, and there was guys who would do every single contest and yeah. do it. And, you know, I mean, it's good to have a lot of people in your contest, but at the same time, it's like doing a concert event, right? If you sold out, but people don't care. I mean, so what? You you did it, and it happened, and people come back. But after a while, they're not going to come back anymore. Mm. So, so each time it was a different. It's a different yeah. break. So you go like someplace like Makapu, and then you move it to someplace else, and then yeah, it was always moved around. And there was guys who would only surf, say Sandy Beach, or Makaha, or Haleiwa, or you know somewhere that they could surf, mm -hmm. and and they'd probably do all right. But outside of that spot, they wouldn't surf it because they knew that they couldn't surf certain spots. And mm. is that going to challenge you if you decide to go pro? Because you got to surf every kind of wave there is, right? Yeah, but at that point, I think you know if you can do it or not. You can make it or not. 
And a lot of these, not a lot of these guys would make it, but there's a lot of guys who did make it. And there's a lot of guys who are like the middle of the road that, hey, I'm getting a salary. There's guys who are making five grand a month just surfing because mm -hmm. they, they knew how to surf and surf on a certain level. But I mean, how many guys make five grand a month? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of guys, and they were they were telling me, yeah, I, I, I'm doing it because I'm making money. But once the money stopped, they stopped. They were, they were getting waiter jobs and, you know, working for restaurants. And they said, you know what, I need to get, I had, I had to get well, a real why, job. Why did the money stop? Because the sponsors dro uh, stopped. Oh. Was that company, there was a company that was, I, sh I shouldn't even mention names of companies, but. <laughs> but yeah, 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 probably not. <laughs> yeah, just keep it generic. <laughs> yeah, Company X used to sponsor so somebody and pay them five grand a month. And then one day they just stopped. And they, I said, what happened to your, your sponsor? Uh, they kind of went out of business. Not mm -hmm. one out of business. They is went that, out is of business. Is that because um, the surfing industry changed or was it just because we got into this internet era and? I think the surfing industry got so saturated with mm. sponsors mm -hmm. that, mm. you know, some companies that were big got way bigger or some companies felt like, you know, we can't, can't compete anymore. And the, some companies sold out to way bigger companies oh, yeah. who owned them, that's, that's which kind of also changed the dynamics of the business. For instance, Nike, Nike got involved. Oh. Nike? Yeah. What? Yeah, and at one point, K2 got involved, which was a surf, uh, a snow Snowboard, company yeah. that ended yeah. up when trying did, to get When did this. that This happen? was back in the early to mid-90s. Yeah. 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 Nike. Yeah. Nike, Nike bought, Nike bought Hurley. Hurley, right? Yeah. Really? Um, yeah. And they, were, they, they had tons of sponsors. And then one day... Oh. Everything. That's us. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, when you think about big business, right? Like you have to have bottom line, and you, you know, in order to show stockholders that you're making a profit, the first thing you do if you're not making is you just cut, yeah. right, expenses. Yeah. And sponsorship is going to be one of those things. Advertising is going to be one of yeah. those first to go. Hmm. It's a business, you yeah. know. And if you understand it, you know how to run with it. If you don't know how to run with it, you're out. In the, um, I'm gonna pivot to longboarding now because in the late. 90s longboarding became popular mm -hmm. and a lot of longboarders bonga were, perkins bonga. yeah yes that, that's the only name that sticks in my yeah, head yeah because we we all grew up with bonga yeah. and, on, on, on the hawaiian style team yeah. so you know we know who he was but it became such a big resurgence in that type of surfing that reed started the hlf which is the hawaii longboard federation which kind of ran like the h pack but uh, but we're putting on contests for a longboard yeah division right yeah surfers yeah bonga was the guy for the He's longest amazing. time yeah but what was amazing, Reed, was when we, when you started that company, we, I would be on the beach watching the contest being, just because Hawaiian Style had some right. contests with HLF that would sponsor on Waikiki Beach, and I'll be sitting next to Rabbit Kick High mm -hmm. or China Unimura, you know, and I got to meet all these legends from Reed, you know, and I wanted to ask you, what was it like to actually know Rabbit on a, on a different level of, than most people? What level is that? The dirty joke level, or? <laughs> well, we know the dirty joke level. <laughs> dirty joke level. I heard it all the time during yeah, the contest. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you, you know him as, as a friend, you know, from yeah. back in the day. What what kind of person was Rabbit? Rabbit to me was just a a down home local guy that loved to surf, and that was his whole his whole thing was. I love to be around surf contests. I love to surf, and that's what I want to do until the day I die, and. You know, he did it. Yeah, and and he, his last home that I saw him at, was at Le Leahi, um, on his, on his bed, when he couldn't even talk anymore, and I I saw him and I said, you know what, this is the last time I'm going to see Rabbit because he he's incoherent, but up to that point it was funny. <laughs> I used to go see him and the nurses used to come in, and they they go, hey, you got to watch your friend, yeah. I said, why? He pinches my ass every time I come in. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. And, but he'd always do it when he was awake and alive and, you know, moving around. But he'd like, but he did that on the beach as well. Yeah. <laughs> all the girls. <laughs> we used to just laugh all day long. And he used to tell jokes and yeah. do everything well, I, on the beach. I think for, for people who are listening to this pod right now, like explain who Rabbit was. Because names like Rabbit, China, like people in Hawaii, we kind of know yes. who that is, yeah. Yes. But other people who are listening right now are going, 
Who? Yeah. And actually, and I'll, I'll just say this. I've knew, known Rabbit since he was, he used to actually dive for the uh, Army, for the Army um, Rescue and Recover team. Oh, wow. So he would go and dive down and that, that, uh, detach all the, those bombs that they used to put on ships that they would try and blow up. But so that from there, I mean, he was, he was a good diver, a good swimmer. But he, he did that. Um, and then, you know, the whole surf side, I mean, he's, he's water. So anything to do with water, he's going to dive down and do. Uh, and he was guys, a good swimmer. How did you guys meet? I always knew who he was uh -huh. as a you know young guy growing up. And I said, hey, Rabbit, you want to work with us at the contest? And he's like, yeah, that's what I do anyway. So we, you know. That, that easy. Was that, was that easy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, super easy. Him, there's a guy who passed away already, Lord Tallyho Blairs. Mm. He was another guy that he was always my announcer, my surf contest announcer, because he did that for the Triple Crown, for, so I just recruited all these guys that I kind of knew but didn't know. I said, you guys want to work more instead of not working? <laughs> you know, I mean, so, it, and it, it worked out great. Like, re really, really, and it's, they're legends that people should know. Yeah. yeah. So it was um, something that. It was a fun time watching those contests go down. But was Rabbit a person who was, in the contest, like the surfing contest, uh, he was or was he contest, always yeah. the guy Sometimes in the amateur surfing. contest? Yeah, yeah. yeah he but was, he never went professional. He was always just this he guy. He was a Waikiki Beach boy. Yeah, but true, there was true. no yeah. uh, professional contest back in the day. Yeah. Right. It was all about, you know, good time, yeah. surfing. He surfed with Duke and stuff. Yeah. Well, what happened yeah. when he was young? He, uh, Duke Anamoku never really cared for Rabbit. Really? Because Rabbit started beating him in all the paddleboard contests he goes oh, i don't like that guy <laughs> he, he, he cheats you know just just he was fast and he, he was, was but he was small too he was right? small but yeah. he was super fast yeah and well that's why they call him rabbit right uh there's another reason why they call him <laughs> <laughs> that's an x-rated reason too <laughs> it's not really x but i i but he was he was fast yeah, yeah. He, he could bunny hop all over the place. <laughs> but, so you're getting the but, inside knowledge so, about these surfers. <laughs> so now, transitioning on a long word, because Reed has a long legacy in the industry. Mm -hmm. Transitioning into um, stand-up stand -up paddling now. One day I was at the beach in Alamana watching the Lantern Flowing Festival. Before that, Reed used to come to my house with all the boards stuck to the top of his roof, tied down, and he'd be like, Hey, Kyle. You got to try stand-up paddle. And I go, what the hell is that? I don't even surf anymore. <laughs> he goes, it's e you, you learn it's easier. You can stand up and you can just work out. You, well. you know, you're getting out of shape, man. You got to start paddling. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, I hear you. And he told me about the story of how his flat arches became arches again and how yeah. he got back into, you know, mm. shape and stuff. So I was like, yeah, yeah, one day I'll do it. And then I was at Alamano Beach Park watching the Lantern Floating Festival. On the, on the side of Magic started? Island. You came by with your board in uh -huh. front of us. And I was picnicking. I was like, hey, what you doing in the water? He was, come. So I came down. He pushed me on the board for the mm. first time. And that's the first time I started stand-up paddling. Ah, I so, know that. Yeah. Well, that's nice. So he, then, you pushed him. He, when, when he asked us to go do it, he goes, here, go. And he just let no, us he go. He didn't like push me like the kind of learn how but he just, he just he just said hey I, I want to show him how easy it was yeah jump on this stand up and paddle down the you know down all the mall. i'm like okay and it it made me buy stand up paddle boards a lot after of paddle boards that. well actually. he introduced me to blaine chambers which yeah. was one of the premier guys yeah, that started he, the whole thing too make you, you did um, Blaine's logo. Yes. Paddle Surf Hawaii boards yeah. was the the, the the premier board to get back in the day. Did you go paddleboarding, John? I've been paddleboarding, yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, uh, it, it's, it is pretty simple. It's just uh, when the wind blows very d one way or the other, then you got to adjust. Yeah. And <laughs> read, read tell me the best, the best advice. The wind blows and you start going out to sea, sit down on your board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you're becoming a sail. <laughs> yeah. I said, okay, got that. But then 
I, I never <laughs> took it to the point where I would surf waves and stuff. I would go to Alamon and paddle back and forth in the channel all day to get in shape. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I stopped because if you look at me now, you know, there's... Well, you are a shape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. But um, I, I want to talk about, like, how it started here in Hawaii. And between Blaine and Reed and a bunch of guys revolutionized the sport to go worldwide. Hmm. And if, even to a point where he started his own stand-up paddle magazine, which was... One of the biggest magazines that came out of Hawaii or um, created in Hawaii and, uh -huh. and went to the world, you know. So That's why I moved to California. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. And that's when I learned all about the whole magazine industry, how to deal with all the Barnes and Nobles and all the companies that bought magazines and how they sold it and the whole you deal. You had no idea? No, he has right there is um, one of the earlier magazines that he did called Heavy Water Magazine. Okay. But I, yeah, I learned how to do it by doing this magazine. Yeah. <laughs> I think the 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 level of um, of disbelief with which I'm hearing like these things that you're talking about just sort of casually, like, well, yeah, what surfing was get getting big, and all yeah. of a sudden I I got my I started my own store, and then yeah. I I got all these contests going, and oh, and then by the way, I started this magazine, and mm. I'm like, how the hell do you? Wait till I tell you he started he, when he invented the airplane. You got your <laughs> uh, my, my friend already oh. is working on the, uh, and this is a side story. Oh, you told me this one. About my friend who does yeah. um, those uh, helicopters, yeah. by battery operated helicopters. Did, I, did yeah. I show you pictures? Yeah. My friend invented the. Oh, you're not joking. You really mean. This is his friend that My friend it. has, okay. they, they have it in China already. They just can't get it. Approved. Here, approved in America, yeah. but they have it. So when he sees all these um, futuristic battery-operated planes flying around, it's like he goes, "Ah, I know, I know that design. I've I've done it before." Wait, so he, so he, this is something that carries a person. Yeah, and lifts, lifts up and yeah. Yeah, they have those. I mean, he he's already got cars that can you can drive on water, mm. but. Yeah, can't do anything yet because nobody. He sent me the website. I'll show you. Hmm. It's pretty neat. I sent you the website. Bond. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But so wait, wait. I I got it. I got to know about this magazine thing because it's it seems like uh, I'm I'm envisioning his life like a a surfer because you're pretty much you're getting there before the wave starts and then you go all right well here we go and then you just sort of ride the thing so like this. You don't know anything about magazines. You don't know anything about putting that kind of stuff know. together. Yeah, it's and then you you just sort of <laughs> learn it and then put this thing I, out. I had no idea what I was doing. But then I started doing it and I go, it's not that hard. You just have to figure out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, the person I, that's a good, the person good quote for a t-shirt right there. I know, I was like, what? <laughs> but these days with AI and all the stuff you can do to help you do a magazine, it's a lot easier. So you're still creating these things. Well, these you don't understand. Things. Like every once, maybe twice a year, I'll get a phone call from Reed. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Kyle, Reed. And I go, hey, what's up, man? What, what are you going to do now? And he would tell me his next venture. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I would either help him with art or, or talk to him about it. And the next thing you know, it would be one of the biggest things, you know. So with Stand Up Paddle magazine and Stand Up Paddle, he told me, this thing is going to go all over the road, Kyle. I go, the paddle on the surfboard. He goes, yeah. A paddle on the surfboard. <laughs> he goes, no, seriously, it's going to go all over the world because now you can go flat water. Mm. You can visit lakes. You can do everything with it. It's going to be big. It's going to be one of the most biggest things to come yeah, out of Hawaii. That's, that's what we did. And he ended up being a part of it, pioneering it and taking it to that level. And with nobody the believed and me when, I, when we started. In fact, I forgot the two magazines in, the, in the, my car. Uh -huh. But we, we did lakes when nobody did lakes because they didn't think you could paddle on. Ah. Yeah. Like, so... I found a magazine from Heavy Water right there that actually talks about the genesis of SUP surfing in a surfing magazine that I think yeah. you wrote that article. So if you can yeah, show I, that article to the camera, I mean, the... the yeah. yeah, you can look at it later. You see, it says, you, you see why these two are friends, huh? Yeah. You see what it says? Like, this is a surfing magazine. And yeah. It's already talking about the beginning of paddling. What year is this? This is... What's up? Over 10 SUP. years ago. This is... This is 2007. You told me... We did this already, Kyle. Yeah. We did? Well, before you got here, Deb. Oh, okay, okay. No, but it, it's funny. I can see why these two get along so well, except it's a little bit different. In Creating the sense ideas, that, different. Yeah, because you get the idea, and then you go do them. 
Uh-huh. Kyle gets the idea and goes, John, Devin, and he can make it happen. This. But and you know what? And he what? does make it happen. <laughs> he does. The logo, <laughs> the logo we did for the the HLF series, he he did a logo for it, and I thought it was the, one of the best logos I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I gave it to my ex partner, <laughs> and I don't know what happened to it. Yeah. She, could, she could have made money with it, but I don't think she knew how to. What design was that for? I think it was the HLF logo, right? It was a logo with um, kind of like a stat- war- warhead statue of um, a Hawaiian warrior. Mm. Um, like a Prima logo. Yeah. So he's standing in the... Uh, the There's the wave that made the logo hel- the helmet of the Ali. Mm. And the surfer standing in the wave. He can show you that of a silhouette of a surfer. Oh, cool. It. Yeah. And then it it's made really, a Hawaiian really cool. helmet from far away. I mean, if she did stickers, yeah. she could easily sell them. Yeah. You guys did some, you, did, yeah. you dabbled in some clothing with it at one point or yeah. another too. Paddleboarding is more of a sort of a keep in shape recreational type thing as opposed to something you could do a contest with. I mean, unless oh, guys no, are no, going no, to no, surf no. waves, right? Guys were surfing yeah, pretty yeah. big waves with that thing right. now too. So it's progressed to that. But point. it's more of a, it's a health and fitness thing. Yeah. 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 And that's why it took off with women. Yeah. That's why I had so many female paddlers. <laughs> Oh, so, really? <laughs> here's another thing that this guy started. Okay. Was, he started a company called Paddlecore Fitness. Okay. It was a company that you sign up for a subscription. You meet at you meet in the mornings at um, Ala Moana, yeah, Magic Island. We still Island. do it, but I, I don't do it. I, my, my, my youngest son took it over. Yeah, and it's basically yoga on the water with the oh, SUP yeah, boards. Yeah, I've seen what? It. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. How many kids do you have? 20. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got, I got, I got all boys. I got four boys. Okay. But my oldest one is forty-four. And are and they all involved with something that has to do with the water or something? Not different? at all. No. I just gave my oldest son and his girlfriend um, two boards, but he doesn't even paddle. Hmm. He he cooks too much. He's a he's a chef. Oh wow. He he was a chef at Highs for like ten years. Oh Highs. Yeah, he used to be, but man, he he was he was. The, uh, he was an insane cult, uh, cook at highs. Hmm. I mean, his steaks were like the best garlic steak. Ooh. I mean, he was he was good. Did he go start another restaurant? Or? No, he works for himself doing um, catering. Catering stuff. Oh, okay. He, he, he makes he makes a lot of money. Whether he saves it, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has a girlfriend, so probably not. What's that? He has a girlfriend, so probably not. Huh? No, she helps him out. No, <laughs> you know what? She's she's the best at. It. She makes cakes, oh. like custom cakes, and it's not oh. cheap, like fifty dollar cakes oh. for birthday parties or whatever. She's on she's unreal, and she's young. I think his girlfriend's only twenty five now. That's oh. a thing nowadays, making those custom cakes and stuff. Yeah, you're gonna say, I that's a the, thing now. Old guys and young. Uh, <laughs> that is a thing. That's always yeah. always been a thing. It's always yeah. been. Yeah, it's always been. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but so I mean, funny. <laughs> it, okay, now so transition from magazine. Okay, now, okay. We will go into television. Okay. So he also Reed was also the one to put on the production of Gotcha Backdoor Surf TV on Oceanic. Was okay. it on Spectrum? Yeah, or? you know what's funny? It's, I think I did the very first. Um, EJ EA Buck was the first guy to do a cable show. Yeah. On Oceanic Cable, and I I met the owner of the cable director for um, Oceanic Cable. I said, hey, do you have any surf programs on that you guys can put on? Because I can put on a spon- uh, show with, with sponsors. And I did. So right after <laughs> Another that, thing you went, well, maybe I can do this. I, I was doing everything at, at one time. <laughs> I mean, I was doing a lot. I wasn't, I wasn't doing, I was doing a lot of different things. But, you know, I'd spend, manage, time to do a TV show, time to do a magazine. Time to put on contests, yeah. but it was all managed so that I could do everything at once. And when you do a contest, it's during the day, and it's during a certain time of year mm-hmm. where the magazines, the TV shows and magazines, to me, was at night. And um, I did it. So you just basically worked 24 hours a day then? Kind of. <laughs> Somebody goes, well, you, you do so many things. Guys like us, we got to work our, our regular job. I go... Yeah, you try try doing three things like I'm doing right now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like if I don't manage my time, I won't be able to pull it off. And the so, sponsors, the sponsors help to pay you. Always had, this, I always right? had sponsors. Yeah. Okay. And doing, what is the what is the 
how do you go get a sponsor? Is it because you walk in and they go, oh, it's Reed. Okay, whatever you need here. Um, I just talk to people that like what I was doing. Uh -huh. Like when I was doing my backdoor TV show, mm -hmm. I had got to do it. My friend was the guy with the money. So he goes, hey, you want to do a TV show? I'll sponsor it. So he would sponsor it. Write me a check. I'd go, oh, you didn't get your money yet? I'll write you a check right now. And he'd give me the money for what he owed me for. What? And, and i do it. Yeah, I mean, even with uh, high sessions, you know, people always say like um, the best sponsors are the ones that can be passionate about whatever you're doing. Yeah. Like, so if yeah. you could find someone that's really into Hawaiian music that could partner with you or whatever. Yeah, they're going to do it. They're gonna Reed, do can it. you find somebody who will sponsor the three of us just sitting around and bullshitting all day? Because that would be really great. <laughs> we could use I'll, I'll, look, I'll look it up, see what, what's out there. Well, Actually, what? some there's probably somebody that would get involved well i mean there, there are people that we do love our patrons because they're yeah, passionate right, about yeah, the podcast right, they listen right. to the podcast so with the internet that has kind of expanded into you know, anybody can now be yeah. a, a, a sponsor right yeah. but yeah so uh food companies food companies well, well we, we have, have one we have ruger company. you know so yeah, what about people who make actual specialty items like maybe like make candy or well, we got to figure out a way you know, well, sorry, we're turning this into a high session thing, but it's okay. The, the, this is the hard part has always been that you know our focus is on the music and the artist, uh -huh. and so we don't want to cloud too much of the music of the video to to focus on a sponsor because like one time we had a uh, alcohol company that did want uh -huh. to sponsor us, yeah, but they wanted to put a big banner in the back of the artist and you know have things yeah. flying. and we said no because the focus is supposed to be on the artist. Yeah. You know? No, John, I'm I'm talking about. Us. Yeah, I yeah, don't I, care I, about I, the high session <laughs> thing where we're doing music. I'm talking about the three of us the idiots sitting in a room talking story. Nobody's we gonna want to give us money. Hey <laughs> man, you know what? Hey the, man, I, I guarantee you there's, but it's got to be the right product. Like I know yeah. people that do food. I mean, and everybody needs to eat. Yeah. But if yeah. they feel like that could help their business as far as exposure goes, yeah. they're they're out there. Yeah. yeah. And, and you must have done a lot of like. Uh, Calling people, uh, calling around, getting seeing who's interested and stuff like that. That's prop. Uh, you um, know, it's just, there's certain people that I, I know I can call, mm. so I'll call them. But there's people that I, I just kind of stay away from. Mm. And there's a shady guys that's like, you know what? I don't even want to deal with that guy. Oh, interesting. But um, I know a guy who actually, if it works out, might be interested in talking to you guys. Somebody put together a package, and then. <laughs> Definitely. I know a guy who makes it. You know, that man's just jockeying for a job. That's like me and John, me and John have jobs right now to take care of. No, if we can, if we can do this where we don't have to worry about it as much, and we just just I sit here for a week. That's bro. Oh, no, I don't know. Well, maybe we could get a new AC. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Somebody nice. pays for yeah. the AC. Costco. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Get a, you know, get a Dyken. Costco AC. Oh. You know, there's there's so much things I wanted to. Okay, okay, we yeah. yeah. We're gonna have to have him come that, back. That he's done. And, yeah. and stuff with companies. I mean, I had a whole list. Yeah. But what I wanted to and do And by the way, Reed, this is the first time he's ever come in with any kind of yeah. really? Kyle has never prepared. No, never prepared. Anybody. Ever. Well, got, and this one, look, he did like notes and stuff. He's more it's prepared impressive. than I am because I, I forgot all my notes. <laughs> well, because I know him so long and I know all the things that he did, I had to write it down to remember what it was. It's good though. Because he's I don't everywhere, remember. right? Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah. the one thing I wanted to... Um, Cover. The one thing. <laughs> By the way, before you, before you go on, yeah, I know a guy who makes the has the biggest kimchi factor in Hawaii. Okay, <laughs> but it's the kind of guy you want to talk to, because everybody. Eats. I loved kimchi. We love kimchi. We we all love kimchi, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but who's that, Mr. Homs? <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, off the record, this guy. Yeah. He he has you know if he likes what what you guys are doing. He, he might be interested. That's all we need is three guys at kimchi bread talking to people right. every week, we'll, right? We'll, we'll sit on very far ends of the table from each other. I don't mind. I love kimchi. But, <laughs> what I wanted to do was um, talk about the next phase that you went through with your with your, yourself, and that was your health. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And um, just recently, you had some type oh, of man, health I was, scare. I was dead. I, I didn't I didn't die, or I was I almost died. I was dead for eight hours. Wow. <laughs> what? I mean, they cut they cut everything off. I went, and it's kind of a weird, interesting, long story. But I knew a CEO of one of the hospitals, and I told her I need to get a I need to get my heart worked on. 
I, I, I need bypass surgery. Oh. So she hooked me up with a doctor that, to me, he was the best guy around. Because I had friends that went to the same guy for surgery. And um, he goes, yeah, we're not going to do a stent in your body. We're going we're gonna... to, he didn't say cut me right open, but he cut me right open and he cut all my cords. And I, I, I said, he cut the blue cords all open. He sewed it back, got the red ones open and sewed me back. And at the same time, and he didn't tell me this until after I came out of the surgery. He goes, oh, you know, we stopped your body for eight hours. Yeah. I said, no. He goes, well, we did. And we had to put you on a lung pump mm -hmm. for eight hours and kept me going. And then wow. we, they circ recirculated. They kept yeah. pumping my blood to stay yeah. alive. And I go, man, we gave you a lot of blood. I go, how much? He goes, oh, I can't tell you because they don't tell you, right? Mm -hmm. But it was a couple of gallons of blood. And I hemorrhaged. My heart was hemorrhaging. But the guy acted like. No big deal. Yeah, like, Just oh, another you know, day at the office. Yeah. We, That's crazy. We, we got you back. You, you're going to live longer. <laughs> he, said, back. He, he, he said, you know what? You're probably going to outlive me. <laughs> Just like that. Is that and was he, that a normal apparition that he does every day at XY? Was he used to that happening? Or? Um, he's done quadruple bypass. Oh, and it was a, he said he was going to do a double bypass. But he said, no, we had to do a, a quadruple bypass. Not a triple bypass. Quadruple bypass. But, but you're fine now. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> but he was like, he was laughing. He goes, you're going to outlive me. I guarantee you. So they didn't put any new plumbing in. They just moved stuff around. Um, well, I, all I remember is, and I have surgery, like, Ooh, the the scar, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. right here and right here, they had a line going in and out. And I remember being on the hospital bed. I was like, man, why am I so tired? And why am I feeling like I got cut right open? And they told me, yeah, we broke your rib open so we could get in there heart, yeah. they, and they just they had it they clamped it open so they could work on me for eight hours <laughs> not not a couple hours was eight hours that's freaking nuts. so you had <laughs> so you had clogs in all four arteries in what's that so you had clogs in all four arteries and that's what you it know is. i i kind of know but i don't know hmm. because he can tell me whatever he wants but at the same time, how do I know? I'm not. I'm not yeah. the doctor. Yeah. Wow. His but bottom it, line was, "You're good, so don't worry about what <laughs> right. I did." That's what he yeah. said. He said, "You're gonna live longer than me." How long ago was this? April. Wow. So, whoa. We we're planning on getting Reed on the pod before, <laughs> and we kept pushing it. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, he's like, "I'm gonna have some open heart surgery." <laughs> so, uh, call me when I get better, and we'll figure out a date. Man, I was this, out. I was yeah. so out, and when I came back to life. It's just recently, like in the last four weeks, where my brain started functioning right. Like, I couldn't even think about two months ago. Mm. Like, I couldn't even think about, if I had to do this, I'd be stuck. I'd be completely stuck and like, mm, my hip brain's not thinking. I, I don't know what I'm going to say. Um, so. Well, well, I'm you're glad good. you're here. You're doing man. well um, now, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm here. You sound terrific. What, what, okay. So... He, he called me after the operation and I, well, I called you. You had to see how you yeah. was doing. Yeah. And you talked about an experience that you had when you're on the table that was, I was wondering if was, you wanted to share. It was so weird. When, so when I came out of the hospital, I was sitting on the hospital bed and I know this never happened to me before. I started like just hearing, like crying for no reason. Not, not crying, but just like I could feel like deep thoughts that I never felt before. And I told my wife, I don't know what's going on, but I, I feel something within me is transformed and I, I feel different. So when she took me home from the hospital, um, from Queens Hospital into that on-ramp that goes onto the freeway just before Polly, there's that tunnel from mm -hmm. the airport going out and in. Mm -hmm. I just had this experience of I could feel and see all these bodies of people and hands like reaching out to me and I was like tearing up and she said, what's wrong? Oh, what, why are you crying? So I'm not crying. I can feel people pulling me like trying to grab onto me like they needed to talk to me about something. Mm -hmm. So it was like, what's going on? And so that happened 
through that whole experience through the tunnel. And um, I never felt that before. And I never felt, because my father went through an out-of-body out experience where he went through the tunnel and into the light. He saw the light. And my father was like a full, I don't believe in God. I, you know, he's, he doesn't exist. And I said, whatever, what, whatever you think, you know, is, is what, what you feel and think. And then after he had that, he went through the whole, I went through the tunnel and I came back. And so I, I know what I felt. And it wasn't what he felt. And people would tell me the same thing. Oh, my, my, my father or my brother or my sister or my mom had the outer body experience. But mine was not what they saw. Mm. Mine was just full. Like, this is, this is interesting and weird at the same time. And I know I'm alive, but there's a reason why I'm alive and the reason why I need to share experiences. So are you still having those experiences or were you feeling people reaching out to you and talking to you? You know, I, I believe it or not, I always I could always feel that. Mm -hmm. I had a friend, um, and, and you know the guy who passed away. He, he was in a coma, and I could see, I went into his hospital room, and I could, I could feel, and they, they say this happens to people who go to heaven. Mm -hmm. He could feel the birds pulling on him, and that happened to my father. That's why I knew what my father was feeling, because when he went to heaven, he goes, these weird big birds are pulling me. I don't know where I'm going, but they're pulling me. They're not even, they're, they're birds, they're like giant birds. It was the angels from heaven pulling him. But my friend had the same thing happen, um, and he was getting pulled, and my friend who was a, a surfer, said, hey, did you see the big birds? I said, yeah, there's the angels from heaven. He goes, how do you know that? I said, because I know people have seen it before. Mm. But my friend, he, and you know the guy, Mel? Yeah, Mel Kinney. Yeah, he, he saw the same thing. And I, I, I could tell that he was feeling it because I could see the birds, but his friend was like wiping his tears off his face. So he wasn't dead yet. He was He was just like, Okay, I don't want to go yet, but I can I can feel things happening because his tears were just ro ro rolling down his eyes, just full. Okay, it's it's this is real. Mm -hmm. That's why I know it's real that it does happen. Mm -hmm. And whatever anybody says about ah, that's not that's that's all. Because my, my sisters were ah, you know, he's just making things up. I, I just told my father, I know what's going on, and he goes, Yeah, how come do you how come you understand? And your sisters don't even know what I'm talking about said because they don't believe and they don't understand but it's what's happening you know so your dad was this when your dad was making his transition and leaving or uh, like he was he went later, and he came back two weeks later he he went he passed oh, okay. yeah and I, I was living on the mainland when i saw him but i said i know exactly what's happening mm -hmm. and you know at least you're in good hands yeah so he understood he knew that i understood what was going on and before that he was a full Antichrist hater. Yeah. You know, he was he was like, I didn't I don't believe in God, but after that I was like, I believe. Hmm. How old was your dad when he passed? He was about eighty three. Hmm. He was he wasn't he was old but he wasn't that old. But he had heart problems like like, you. like me. But worse. I mean he he had heart a heart attack. I mean he was gone. But my sister got they gave him CPR and brought him back to life. I was lucky that I just got mine earlier to where, you know, my body's yeah. being saved now yeah. and yeah. everything's going to be better. So and you I didn't have a heart attack. You just felt funky and went. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's what people go. You, you, you didn't have a heart attack. You, you just felt like maybe you should go in and get everything checked. <laughs> and said, Take everything and keep me on life support for eight hours. <laughs> well, okay. You're out of breath. for. Oh, man. I went different. walking from our house in Manoa to UH. And on my way back, I told my wife, you got to come pick me up because I cannot walk back up. I wow. feel like I'm going to pass out. And I, I would have passed out if she didn't pick me up. It's good you listen to your body at least. So. Yeah. yeah. And then my cardiologist said, you lucky you had her and she, she, she picked you up and you would have been dead. I said, mm -hmm. I know. But I, I kind of felt like, I felt the vibe of I could go anytime if I don't, do anything about it yeah so 
heavy stuff. So now going through all that, do you have a different perspective on, on, on life and death? Like, like, are you afraid? I don't think I was ever afraid. Mm. That's the whole thing. Um, and I know people who are, but I was never afraid. I mean, if, when it's, to me, I look at hey, when it's your, your time to go, you're going to go. Just be ready for it. Plus, so. you've achieved so much. I don't know how you... Like, <laughs> what, more can you what more can you do? I know, I know they want to keep you around for a reason, but... You got yeah, more shit to do, and right? that's cool, but, I mean, I guess you got way more shit to do, but I'm like, damn, <laughs> you did so much. I don't know. You but, know what I mean? Like, you've done, it, more in, you've done more in the time that you've been here than five, ten people that I so know all put together. Did you, so. have, you slowed down, have, did you slow down now? Or are you, are you uh, ready to rev back up and be as busy as you were? I'm so busy, but I think your body forces you to slow down yeah. and do in, in my mind i'm thinking yeah i'm still gonna work hard and do whatever i need to do but just make my, kyle do them i do exactly now you can do it my it's my logo kyle, <laughs> right, so tired. you gotta do this thing for me well, well, what, what kind of advice can you give us not, you know like moving I, forward i think now? i think like what are we doing that we're not we're not doing correctly you number know? one is just be happy and don't think you're going to save the world. Save what you can for people around you that you care about. Um, but just don't do too much and be selfish about what you think you can do but shouldn't be doing. Just be more respectable and uh, more balanced than everything. In fact, my, my son was just telling me, my 20-year-old, my because we were done at the dump and... Um, Waipahu dumping rubbish. He goes, oh man, that's pissing me off. You know what? He's all mad and he's on the side of the freeway and he's he's trying to put the some stuff that we couldn't throw at the jump dump, um, put back in the truck and I had to tie it back down. And he's like, he's he's doing too much. He's gonna kill himself. If he kills himself, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, he he cared, but he was feeling pissed off at the time. So I was saying, you know what? He's right. I, I'm w doing way too much. So you got everybody's got to slow down. I mean, we want to save the world, but we can only do so much, right? <laughs> At the same time, you have to laugh and smile yeah. as much as you can. Oh, well, you're right. definitely doing that. Yeah. Now, um, Kyle, I, I, I promised Devin I'd give him some time to talk about his trip. So Devin, you have. Six, it's kind of hard to talk. It's hard to talk about the trip when we've had him uh, sitting in front of us talking about all this stuff. So, um, why don't we do the three things and then we'll? Oh, I we didn't can, mean do that. Yeah. What's yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, thanks for reminding me, Devin. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, as part of our show, we have this question that we ask all our guests uh -huh. because we are on a music channel, so it, it's a music-related question. All right. If you were stranded on a desert island for all of eternity and could only take three albums with you to listen to for the rest of time, what would those three albums be? Or a collection of, of albums from certain artists? You're, you're old enough that you know albums. Yeah. So we give you the albums question. What, what would those ans um, albums be? Yeah. Actually, it would be more, would be sounds hmm. that, uh, like, I, I think people don't listen to enough sounds of nature okay so if you listen to the sounds of like even water just that calming sound of water throughout the day um that'll be one of them i mean that's important yep because it's about being calm right mm -hmm. that's um, it helps you pee what's that it helps me pee yeah <laughs> <laughs> and as you get older it's nice to have help oh yeah you know you don't need to take ferrosamide <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is? No, I don't want to know what it is. <laughs> Rosamide is when you, when you, if it forces you to drain yeah. fluid. You uh, know I, have no, I have no problem with that. I I'm, go like I'm three times a night. So I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he don't need to worry about that. But, okay, um, sorry. What other sounds? Uh, sound of laughter. Hmm. That's why I say sounds because I think all these sounds are important to human life. Um, laughter and kids laughing. Um, what would be the third one? Silence. We'd have to. We need silence. Hmm. Um, so, I know people say other things like what what music, but that would be more like sounds that everyone needs to hear. 
Okay. So silence, laughing, and sound of water. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Makes makes sense, right? That's a yep. that's, that's, that's a, a new, new three. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's the only album I can relate to is um Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> the sound oh, of silence. Did I tell you about? <laughs> did we talk about Paul Simon and 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 uh, Hawk to a girl? Uh <laughs> no. So um. The, you know who the Hawk Tua yes. girl is? Okay, yeah. You know the, who that is, right? What is Hawk Tua? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we'll, we'll tell you off there. Yeah, yeah. She was on the uh, Bill Maher podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then oh, yeah. they were oh, talking, dude. and he's something like that, and he goes, uh, you know, like the great songwriters like <sighs> Billy Joel and Paul Simon. She had no idea who either Man. of those two were. Uh-huh. So, I was, at, so I, I was listening to it on my way to a wedding. So Herb and I did a wedding, and then uh, at the wedding, there was this young girl doing the – she was doing the flower arrangements and stuff. So we're standing around and, and she's probably, I'm like, how, how old are you? She goes, 20. I'm like, do you know who Paul Simon or um, Billy Joel is? And she's like, no, I, I don't know who that is. So I think that, yeah, those, I think those artists. Well, they also are, asked her about rappers. She, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, she, yeah. She just, yeah I was like, please tell the me. The second she's viral joking. moment. Please of, tell me. She's yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Please. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. I want to I wanna do an experiment. So we're going to. We're gonna do the the story of my trip as a Patreon thing because it'll take like five ten minutes. Okay. Okay. Because that way nobody can see it, but at least I've done the story, and then okay. that way we don't waste Reed's time. <laughs> okay. Because he's been here long enough. Okay. 